Meeting call to order. Please stand for the salute to the flag. Freeholder Seabold, will you please lead us in the salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Roll call member clerk. Freeholder Beasley, absent. Freeholder Bovadia, absent. Freeholder Clark, absent. Freeholder Gill, absent. Freeholder Johnson. Present. Freeholder Luciano. Here. Freeholder Owens. Present. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Here. Freeholder President Watson. Present. Um, Madam Clerk, I have before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Um, Madam Clerk, for the record, Freeholder Carol Clark is present. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any topics of discussion? Madam President, there are none. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's go to the public comment session. Um, there are no agenda items for action uh, tonight and resolutions number eight has been withdrawn by the administration. So if there's any member of the public who would like to speak uh, uh, on any issue except for the res for resolution eight, number eight, please come to the microphone and state your name and affiliation for the record. And you will have three minutes to speak. Good evening. Good evening. Cassandra Dock, P.O. Box 25331 North. Um, Field, um, Rufus, I know that um, you were made aware of the issue at Westside Park. Um, I'm told we're working on that. Uh, I was at the State of the County address when um, County Executive uh, Joe DiVincenzo talked about some things that he's going to do at Weekway Park and the fact that some of the nonprofits in the area will be able to do a proposal, you know, to do some things in the park. And um, I want to have that conversation with him, or you can have that conversation with him, about doing the same things at Westside Park. Um, maybe what we should talk about, rather than patching up uh, that clubhouse, uh, maybe perhaps we need to knock it down and just renovate it all, you know, do it something all new there. And maybe we can have that conversation. Or, again, like I said, you can have that conversation with the county executive about doing that. Because I'm not sure if all of you are aware that South 17th Street uh, Elementary School uses that clubhouse for their gym. They have to walk, because they don't have a gym within their school, so they walk across the street to the gym. And that clubhouse has not been working now for probably about two months, because I know when I was over there back in December, the gutters, the, the water was just coming all off the roof. You couldn't even stand there and have a conversation in the front uh, entrance of the clubhouse, because the gutters was just uh, uh, crazy. So I guess for, for us not going over there and taking care of the gutters in a timely manner, that co probably caused the whole roof just to probably cave in at some point. So we really need to go over there, take a look at that facility, and see what, because we beautify in all the rest of these parks. He talked, and one thing he's good at, might not be good at nothing else, but he's good, he's good at redoing a park. So we can have that conversation with him. Same things you're doing up at the other parks, you know, when we want you to do the same thing at Westside Park. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Um, do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak at this time? Good evening. Donna Jackson, One Two Eight Mystery. How's everyone? Just fresh in from the New Jersey State Board meeting. Um, glad to see that we are rallying around the state in regards to um, this privatization of education. Um, as a freeholder board, I know you are limited in terms of what you do on local government, um, but I think we need to put on our just resident hat, being state residents, and move forward. Um, they have a new superintendent in the town of Montclair who is in the midst of tearing that town up. They are talking about school closures, charter schools, removing folk with tenure in Montclair. So what I'm going to say today is that we need to let this epidemic stop. Essex County needs to step out front. We see what the governor is doing in New York. We need to take a page. This privatization for profit needs to stop when it's being done off the backs of our children and off the backs of our employees. 
The county has already seen an influx of an additional 50 to 70,000 people going into citizen services. If we allow this privatization of education to continue, you're going to see another five to 10,000 people going into those same coffers. I don't think we have the budget. I don't think the state's going to give us the money to maintain the people that will now be coming for resources that we are scarcely giving now. Secondly, in Newark, in a two-hour period on Monday, we had eight shootings that resulted in three homicides. We don't even have a crime scene unit that can respond. The extra pressure that's being put on the county, you guys need to get involved. The county is always having to come out. The county always has to back us up. Nork is short manned, and that is putting additional pressure on the county. So as the county elected officials, I need you to help me tell Krispy Kreme, AKA governor, that he needs to send some money in here, not only to the county level, but in particular to the city level of Newark. What we are seeing now with being up to 700 officers short is nothing short of bedlam. We had four <laughs> crime scenes going on at one time Monday. We had crime scenes where there were one officer there. That is not acceptable to you, it should not be, because we are definitely pulling on the resources. County officers were responding. I was glad to see that. But then that means we're pulling them from someplace else that they would have been patrolling. This thing is rolling out of proportion, and we really need to get a handle on it. Because if we murdering in five-degree weather, what you think is going to happen when we get to the 50s, 60s, and 70s? Unfortunately, heat causes us to not want to be close to each other. And it causes all kind of extra different situations to go on that's going to really escalate this thing. And finally, um, I would just like to say we still need to really look into separating our county services. You have too many people going into two facilities, even if I'm just talking about the lower end of Essex County. The privacy is an issue. I do not want to sit at the table with my caseworker while they're interviewing me, they're interviewing Doug, they're interviewing Mr. Wadu all at the same time. Oh, don't use their name. I'm sorry. I won't. Okay. This young man you know, and that you young man. Let you know you have 30 seconds. Oh, I, just, okay. I thought you, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to be personal names. But we don't need to be sitting at the table sharing Social Security information, birth date information, what my last food stamp payment was, telling me why Doug was sanctioned. I, I don't need to hear that. So we do need to talk about separation of services, making it more community oriented, and letting our offices be a little more friendly and inviting to people who come in for services, even if it's just food stamps. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for your comments. And as usual, do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Do we have anyone else from the public? Anyone else from the public who would like to speak? They're coming? Okay. How you doing? Good evening. Please state your name and affiliation for the record. I'm Jonathan Harris from Grassroots Emergency Overnight Warming Station. And um, recently I just came into uh, work with a uh, bunch of individuals. We all volunteers um, from different organizations, community organizers. And um, it was just so uh, disarming that that the, the county and the cities that the counties and the cities did not have a cold blue plan in place for um, taking our residents that didn't have an address and putting them into um, temporary shelter or some kind of placing um, housing placement and uh, I've been working with this since January we've been at different or, uh, different sites different organizations we've been at three different churches we have been in um, inside of um, Two different organizations. Um, we housed about uh, 25 to 35 different individuals. Uh, some of the, the services that they need is just basic, like uh, needing help with ID. There's no uh, government or any type of funding or any kind of agency that would actually help them cut the or waive the ID costs. And it, it's just one little simple little thing that can keep them from getting housing. A state ID, a uh, county ID is not really worth much. You know, in terms of getting employment and securing other things, but um, it's something that we have to do on the county level. Um, I'm looking at different examples of Union County do what they call blue, but we don't have a we don't have a plan in Essex County. That's the issue. We don't have a plan in Newark. We don't have a plan in Essex County. This is a big issue, and uh, to take these people off the streets. And if we could house more, or if this if this money that the county has to house more individuals 
like this, this should be some building or something designated in, in between East Orange and Newark, all the property that Essex County owns um, to, um, to house about, you know, at least 100 individuals between Newark, Irvington, and, and uh, Bloomfield, and um, another city. Mount Clear, that's part of Essex County that we need, uh, you know, to get them up. They sleep at Penn Station. We're not giving no social services. We have all these different agencies connected to city government and county government that they're not getting out here doing the resources. We need social workers out here. We need grief counselors and just basic things that we can do. I'm doing it myself out of my own time and you know, volunteering, but there's things that we can do right now as, a, as a county officials, as a municipal government officials that we need to step up and do as well. All right? Okay. And thank you for your comments. Good evening. Can you hear me? Is that good? <laughs> sure. Hi, my name is Karen Cook. I'm also involved with the Grassroots Warming Station. I'm from Union County, but I'm here tonight because I volunteer my time to the city of Newark. I'm a former Newark resident. I grew up here. I was raised in Valesburg. And I love the city that I came from, so I give back to that community. Um, my concern is for the, 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 what we call, instead of homeless, the people with our neighbors without addresses, that's more respectful than calling them homeless. They need the services that should be provided by this county. Um, the city of Newark had nothing for the residents during the extreme cold weather that we had. Our grassroots organization op has been opening weeks on end, three days a week, sometimes two days a week, purely volunteer. I myself cannot be there for the overnight hours of our volunteers, but I've been cooking for them. We provide hot meals, desserts. I've been doing clothing collections. This is something, though, that as an individual, I don't mind doing. I feel it's my responsibility as a, someone in the community that can afford to do it. I was, I'm fortunate if I don't have a lot of money, but I have a lot of my time that I can give. But as freeholders, as officials for the communities, you need to provide these services. Union County has the code blue service uh, where they alert the officials when weather is going to be below a certain temperature and they do what they have to do to get the people without addresses into somewhere where they can be warm and comfortable and feel safe to sleep for the night. The times I were there to serve the meals that I prepared, the people were so wonderful, they were so thankful that they had somewhere they knew they could lay their head down at night and not worry about was there a few possessions going to be stolen? Were they going to be molested? Were they going to be harmed? They were comfortable. They were warm. They were fed. This county needs to do the same thing. And it shouldn't just be the volunteers. It's got to come from the officials for this county, for the cities this, in this, in, within your county. It's got to get done. We have to be responsible for the people that cannot do it for themselves. Thank you. And again, thank you for your comments. We have. Anyone else who would like to speak? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. My name is Brett Morris, and I'm a 28-year-old current resident of North New Jersey. I also represent the Do you have? Would you like to uh, leave your address? Because we normally respond to um, the residents in writing. Um, 128 so South 8th Street. That's in North New Jersey. Thank you. As of now, I represent the Grassroots Emergency Overnight Warming Station. And it is an apolitical, informal group of volunteer residents who care about our neighbors with no address. The unofficial organization, with nearly 700 volunteers and supporters, was organically grown after the question was posed on January 7, 2014, where do the homeless go in case of a state of emergency? or extreme life and limb threatening weather condition overnight. As soon as we learned that there were absolutely no provisions by the city of Newark, the county of Essex, nor the state of New Jersey, we sprung into action and opened our first of many overnight warming stations on January 15, 2014. We have opened in multiple churches, a nonprofit organization building, anywhere that would open the doors to us for this purpose. 
We are currently operating a campaign headquarters that has committed to making that space available for as long as the extreme weather continues. In the interim, we have reached out to every elected and appointed body known to us by mail, email, text, and phone calls. In most cases, there has been absolutely no response. A few people did call to say that they would look into it, quote unquote, but that was the extent and end of their response. On January 23rd, we rejoiced in the announcement that the JFK Recreational Center will be open around the clock. Our work was done. On January 25th, after our neighbors with no address pressed their way to JFK only to find the doors locked, it was acknowledged that it could not open due to broken pipes and plumbing issues. That was it. No plan B and no contingency or backup plan. Absolutely nothing. Shortly after the JFK situation, we began to make referrals on a daily basis. The Goodwill Mission, UCC Shelter, Newark Legal Services, UMD Rutgers, University Hospital, and even welfare offices are but a few of the agencies looking to place clients with us. This unofficial, all-volunteer, non-funded team has somehow become the go-to agency for the homeless population in Newark. We have finally accepted the fact that our officials and representatives either cannot or will not service this population, Excuse so me. we must. Uh, you have 30 seconds to sum up, but at the end of our meeting, you can come back. We will reopen the public hearing if you would like to continue your comments. Our ask is simple and twofold, just to immediately adopt the cold blue policy that's in effect in Union County and to help us make decisions and to further explore how we together can improve the quality of life for our constituents with no address. And again, thank you for the information that, um, that you brought to the, before the Freeholder Board. Um, and again, we will respond to you in writing um, as we do all residents that come before this board. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak? No? Very good. Um, thank you. That ends our public hearing at, the t at this time, Madam Clerk. Are there any ordinances on second reading? Um, there are no ordinances on second reading. Madam Clerk, are there any ordinances on first reading? Uh, there's one ordinance on first reading. Okay. Um, uh, do you want to read that? For me? Yes, salary ordinance, clerk of the board of chosen freeholders. Okay, Michael, do yes. you want to explain that? Absolutely. Uh, the board is empowered to uh, set salary ranges for uh, county employees and directors and uh, <coughs> county executive and obviously the board of freeholders. This ordinance would set the salary range for the clerk of the board of freeholders. Uh, it was set a number of years ago, um, but it was found that that salary range was not, commen was not uh, commensurate with directors with, uh, uh, of county directors who have uh, similar job responsibilities. Um, this salary range, although it doesn't, uh, it doesn't range as high as some of the directors, is uh, more in line with what, we, what this board has previously done with, uh, with some of those directors. Um, and so uh, this would now set a salary range between $69,000 and $110,000 for the position of clerk. What it would allow the board to do administratively, once, uh, if this is adopted, the board uh, could administratively then set a salary for that position within this range. Very good. Thank you. Um, Freeholders, do you have any questions or comments? No comments, no questions, Freeholder, Freeholder Vice President Sipo? Oh, I thought you was adjusting your mic for the questions. Okay, no further questions. Freeholder, Madam Clerk, will you please list it and let's move to resolution one. And, um, oh, Mr. Taylor is not here. No. So, so we'll have, um, Alan, 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 I'm sorry. Please I'm explain sorry. the, the uh, resolution and introduce <coughs> Mr. Willis. Uh, yes, Alan O'Brien, what's Deputy County Administrator. Uh, first, Ralph asked me to uh, express his disappointment. He couldn't be here this evening, but he's ill, so I am flying solo. Um, mm -hmm. Item number one is advice and consent. It's a nomination of Norman A. Willis for reappointment as certified chief financial officer for a three year term. Um, Mr. Willis was previously appointed uh, for 2011 to 2013. 
This will be a new term for 2014 to 2016. The salary range for this position is $65,000 to $130,000. Uh, Mr. Willis is a 32-year-plus employee of the County of Essex, um, and it is a state requirement that we have a chief, uh, a certified chief financial officer and that we come before this board for advice and consent. And Mr. Willis is here to answer any questions you have. Can we have Mr. Willis to come up so that, um, to make his statement, please? And Mr. Bromovich? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Norman A. Willis, uh, Essex County Chief Financial Officer. Um, I've been in this position for uh, three years, and of the 32 years that I have uh, worked for the County of Essex, the three years have went by very quick. But uh, it seemed like only yesterday I was here for my uh, you know, appointment. Um, I think you know three years ago that uh, I have served uh, with the team that uh, Essex County uh, Exec has established, uh, we have made some positive gains. Um, the uh, bond rating is up, surplus is up, audit comments are down, audit adjustments are down. And you know, just that, you know, like um, as I say, uh, I've been in public service for practically 39 years and the last three years have been, you know, very rewarding, mm -hmm. and if reappointed, I will continue to serve the residents of Essex County to the best of my ability, uh, and I'm open for any questions. Very good, thank you. Um, freeholders, do we have any questions uh, for Mr. Willis? Freeholder Vice President Sebo. I have a statement, not a question. I see that you have a, an extensive background in finance, and I'm very pleased that you're willing to continue in this position, which you do so well. So thank you yeah, very thank much. Thank you. Additional comments, freeholders? Freeholder Clark. Freeholder Clark. Uh, just to say thank you for your service, Norm. And, thank you. Um, look forward to um, continuing to work with you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, additional comments, questions, freeholders? Okay, Mr. Willis, let me personally thank you for being here this evening um, and for your outstanding work on behalf of the county. Um, we will vote on your nomination at our next meeting, and I'm sure um, we will not have any additional questions for you uh, next week, but thanks again, and have a good evening, and um, good luck. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, please uh, list the resolution and then let's move <coughs> to resolution two and three, which are new appointments to the Workforce uh, Board Investment. Mr. Abramowitz, um, please explain the resolutions and introduce the nominees. Yes, Madam President. Resolution two is advise and consent the nomination of Nancy T. Fisher for appointment to the Essex County Workforce, Workforce Investment Board. Uh, she's replacing Leonard Schneider. She represents Jewish vocational schools. The term is through 8 31, 2016. Uh, resolution number three, advise and consent, nomination of Willie C. Tolbert, Jr. for appointment to Essex County Workforce Investment Board. It's filling a vacant spot uh, representing Willie Tolbert and Associates, and the term is through 8 31, 2016. And they are both here for your questions. Okay. Um, you want to happen to come up, please? Ms. Fisher? Mm -hmm. Mr. Talbot? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Uh, we have your resume, but hey, maybe yes. you want to add something else? Can I put your name on the record for us, please? Uh, I'm Nancy Fisher. I am currently interim co-executive director of Jewish Vocational Service. It's service, not school. Um, and I focus on education tr and training. I've been on, on the WIB as a literacy chair for the past many years, um, focusing again on literacy needs in Essex County. Um, 
at, at JVS, we work with all populations. Uh, we're a non-sectarian, not-for-profit organization, and we work with people with barriers to employment, and our major goal is to help people become employed and become economically self-sufficient. Very good. Um, freeholders, questions, comments? Freeholders, Seabolt, Vice President Seabolt. Thank you very much. I've known Nancy Fisher for so many years. <laughs> Years before I became a freeholder, her two children were students of mine at West Orange High That's School. Right. So I've known her forever, <coughs> and she does a wonderful, wonderful job at Jewish Vocational Services. And I'm pleased to see you here tonight, and I'm pleased to vote for you and have you be part of this procedure. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments, freeholders? Freeholder Clark. Clark. How are you? Um, the work that it, your your uh, bio, your resume indicates that you have extensive extensive right. um, experience in literacy, and of course we all know that um, that's that unlocks the key to a lot of things. If, I believe uh, it does. If folks can't can't read and communicate effectively, then they're not going to be able to do a whole lot of things. So thank you for your uh, willingness to serve. Just one question: since mm -hmm. you've been a part of the web for a while now. Yes, as literacy chair. Okay. Um, how are we doing in terms of the um, job creation, in your opinion, and um, the balance that we need to, to have between uh, industry, uh, business, and social uh, services programming? Um, are, are, we, are we where we need to be? Are there some things that we could probably you know, bolster to, to help us along? That's I, in your professional opinion. I don't think we're, we're where we need to be yet. Okay. I think we need to make direct, conne direct connections with business and industry, and we need to train to the needs that they identify and not to the needs that we identify. And I think that we really need to start revamping um, some of our education programs so that we're not looking so much at grade level, but at competencies, and see how people can better fit in to um, identify jobs. Well, thank you very much. Um, at, at the work, work first is my committee, so I'm really looking forward to maybe touching base with you and, 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 and picking your brain a little bit more. Be delighted. Um, it, it, it's only going to make us stronger to have you there. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Additional questions or comments for all this for Ms. Fisher? Again, thank you. And we have Mr. Talbot to come up. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Willie Tolbert of uh, Willie Tolbert and Associates, and uh, I'm honored to have this opportunity to, to come before this uh, August board. And uh, just to tell you a little bit, about myself, I guess, outside of my resume. Um, I wanted, I'm a product of the city of Newark and county of Exus for a number of years, and um, I look forward to uh, participating in some of the initiatives and efforts, and perhaps even sharing some uh, ideas that maybe enhance what your, the great work that you're currently doing. Uh, I'm a certified mentor with the state of New Jersey Department of Corrections, wherein I serve as a mentor for those uh, males that are being released out of prison to help provide some direction for them. I'm also heavily engaged in the community where we do a lot of outreach through a, a nonprofit organization as well. Very good. Thank you. Freeholders, questions? Yes. Uh, Johnson, I come back to you for your Brother Talbert, yes. it is indeed to see you here to uh, take this position here with the county because you have definitely in your years of being here showed some very, very exclusive uh, direction to a lot of young men and women in the community and some of them that I know how, of that have been through some of your tutelage. And uh, it is great to have you here, and uh, it's, it's my pleasure to see you here uh, applying for this position. We need people like yourself in these positions to help our citizens grow, because like you said, you're from Newark, 
I'm from Newark. We know the ills that's there in our urban cities like the Newark East Orange, Ir Irvington, and Oranges. And uh, I'm glad you're putting your foot to the fire to help us with the situation at hand. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We hold a Vice President Supo. Thank you very much. Um, your resume really shows that you have so many extensive degrees yes, and you have such a wonderful background. And I think it's a, a real, um, it's really good for the county that you are willing to serve on this board. So thank you so much, and thank you so much for giving your time. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? We have three on the clock. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Mr. Tom Tobin, for your willingness to serve. It's only going to make the board stronger to have you um, to have you there. Uh, looking at your your business acumen, um, it'd be nice to see um, businesses such as yours actually doing business with the county. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Uh, and, and just as I I asked the the, the young lady before you, um, do you see the nexus being um, at least being formulated so that uh, people can maybe get jobs? I know it's going to be it's going to take a little bit for them to get jobs in the industry uh, or or in in the area that that you happen to be uh, gainfully employed in. But um, are there some folks that uh, can actually possibly get there with? Uh, a little bit of training or some tools? Most definitely. Um, what I'm blessed um, to share as a response is that I, I have this uh, philosophy that what I've learned in Egypt, I bring it to the kingdom, meaning what may have been uh, excluded some, I've learned how to do financial literacy through showing them entrepreneur, I'm also an alumni of the state of New Jersey's uh, ETI program, which is their entrepreneur training, and it's always been a passion of mine to address that particular uh, concern. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Talbot, someone I've been seeing around town for <laughs> many, many years, and uh, He's always held himself in, uh, like he is absolutely now, uh, spotless in his character and his work and whatever he's doing. So I'm very happy to see you, Willie, doing, continue to do what you're doing, and uh, the county is glad to have you, at least I am, <laughs> doing what you're doing for our county. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you both for being here uh, tonight and for your willingness to volunteer your service. And it's hard to find volunteers today. Yes, it is. Um, and from your resumes and experiences, I am sure you both make many contributions uh, to the work of the Workforce Investment, Workforce and First Investment Board. And I think Freeholder Clark said that she will be meeting with you guys um, very soon through, with her meeting. Uh, she used to schedule her committee meetings. So we will vote on your nominations next week. And um, I again, thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank okay. you. Okay. Right. Okay, Madam Clerk, please list both resolutions. And now let's move to resolution number four. Um, I keep saying Mr. Shell and Mr. Bronowitz. <laughs> yes, Madam President. <laughs> resolution four, Essex County Office of the Register of Dues and Mortgages contract with the First Community Development Corporation of New Jersey to provide janitorial services to be performed by disabled persons employed by a sheltered workshop. A two-year agreement, January 1, 2014 to December 31, 2015, amount not to exceed $42,300. Um, this is a bid exempt. It was a uh, vendor's and nonprofit status. The amount for 2014 will be $21,000 for 2015, 21300 uh, we provide you the scope of work that the company will be providing, and it's funded through the Registered Trust account. Okay, que questions, comments, the order. Excuse me. No questions, no comments? Madam President. Yes, Mr. Um, um, I'd just like to remind the administration that during the course of the budget hearings, we requested not only the Registered Trust account, but the Sheriff's Forfeiture account and the Prosecutor's Forfeiture account. 
and i don't know if the clerk has seen any of those come to her but we have yet i have yet to see any of those that we did request from those uh from those departments obviously nothing to do with this resolution but mm -hmm. when you said a trust account I, I recall we did ask for those for a specific reason very good uh, mr Bronowitz, would you make sure that that request coming from mr mcadurney we follow up on that as he stated if we did bring that up in our budget hearings i will do so okay. madam president thank you um madam clerk additional questions comments preholders None. Madam Clerk, please list it and let's move to the next resolution, Mr. Bronowitz, and let's take five through seven. Resolution five is Office of the Prosecutors, a contract award to PV Corporation, the sole responsive and responsible bidder to furnish and deliver criminal investigation equipment and supplies via catalog discount. It's a two-year agreement, amount not to exceed $75,000. Uh, we received one bid from 10 potential vendors. Uh, it's an open-ended contract as needed, and it provides crime scene gear, equipment, and supplies. Resolution 6, Department of Corrections, contract award to SDA Laundry Tech, the sole responsive and responsible bidder to provide repair of laundry equipment for the period March 11, 2014 to March 10, 2016, amount not to exceed $200,000. It's a two-year contract. Uh, we received one bid from nine potential vendors. Uh, the last contract year was $120,000. Um, it's, it, it's believed that because the equipment is getting older, it may require a, a, a larger amount this time. And this is a new vendor to the County of Essex. Resolution 7, Department of Health and Rehabilitation, Division of Community Health Services, approval of a grant agreement with the State of New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection for the SFY 2014 core program grant under the County Environmental Health Act from July 1st, 2013 to June 30th, 2014, $223,715. The budget insertion's already completed on this. Um, a state agreement needs to be approved and executed. This is for the county administrator of the core pollution control programs in the area of air pollution control, solid waste inspections, and HAZMAT programs. Very good. Uh, Mr. McInerney, do you have any questions on 507? None. Freeholders, do you have any questions on resolution 5, 6, 7? Mr. Padovecchio, any questions? No, I don't. Okay. Freeholder Clark. Um, yeah, on, on number 6, Mr. Obamowitz, you said that. Um, Have we ever have have we ever dealt with them before? This vendor is a new vendor. This is this a new vendor. This is a new vendor, yes. What did we spend on this kind of service before? The last two year contracts were one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Two year contract was one hundred and twenty. Correct. So why are we spending? On like a hundred, hundred thousand more on this two-year contract. I'm sorry. This is for 2014 to 2016. Right. You said, and you said the last two-year contract. The was last two-year contract was 120 thousand dollars. Right. So why? Because the feeling is the equipment is getting older and needs more maintenance. Um. Did we, did we even, the other company that we had didn't want to bid on it? This is the only bid we received from nine potential vendors. Okay. Well, the, if the equipment is that, how, how much of the 120 did we spend last year? Like, like in other words, we had it there, but did the, equi did the equipment really break down? It, it, may, it may have not broken down through madam president that i would not know i could get that information for you, you okay may i do we have the vendor here tonight i believe we do not yeah. and just so maybe here, that would be good if you bring to have the vendor come madam president thousand and normally we bring the vendor in for contracts that we go over hundred thousand mm -hmm. and 
Just out of curiosity, okay, you real quick. I'll come back to you. Yes. Thank you. Where, where, where is this equipment? Is it in one location or several? This is the correction facility on Dreams Avenue. Okay. And how? And about how old is the equipment? It'd be as old as the jail is, which is approximately seven years old. Okay. All right. Okie dokie. Um, um. Hold Johnson. And then, Mr. McInerney, did, did I see your hand? Yes. Okay, as soon as Preholder Johnson asks his question, I'll come back to you. Mr. Abramovich, I would like to put in a suggestion because you, 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 we were playing $120,000 for a two year contract last year. Correct. Correct? For this two year, year is, is $200,000. I would like to make a suggestion. <clears throat> I think with $200,000, we should be able to renew the, the equipment and not have the problems that we're having. I, I think probably better to speak to the vendor to find out what the issues are with the with, with the information with the uh, equipment as is. Because we're spending a hundred thousand dollars a year for them to sit back and repair them, and we don't know how many or what kind of repairs is going to be done. I would suggest if the equipment has been there as long as the facility itself, we need to look into renewing it. I uh, um, I am recommending that the. Um them to come so you can ask some questions and we can give you an idea of the type of repairs and how often he's repairing the thing. And I'm sure the administration then will take your suggestion. Thank to consider you. Your Thank you, Madam President. Do we have any uh, additional uh, questions, freeholders? McInerney. Mr. McInerney? No, I'm good, thanks. I didn't see you look up again. Okay, no additional questions, no comments. Madam Court, we list five, six, and seven. Resolution eight, withdrawn by the administration. And we'll go with nine, 10, and 11. Mr. Bronowitz. Resolution nine, Department of Economic Development, Training and Employment, Division of Training and Employment, contract modification to the 2013 matrix of services provider agreements for welfare to work and work for investment act services adding an aggregate amount not to exceed nineteen thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars to five service provider contracts uh, increase the service provider contracts by exceeding the established achieve, achievement benchmarks and anticipated success rates the five are Essex county college la casa de don pedro metropolitan resurrection learning center Program for Parents Academy and Workforce Advantage. And I have Arlene Steinbacker here to explain if needed. Thank you, Ms. Steinbacker, would you come to the microphone, please? Arlene Steinbacker, Director of the Division of Training and Employment. Uh, this is amending those five contracts. Uh, we, uh, what we do is the, the vendors have exceeded our anticipated success rate. And as we've been doing this for over the last 10 years, we have an estimate. We always figure that they are not going to do 100%, and they normally don't. But if and when they do exceed our success rate, our predicted success rate, we have to come back to the board, amend the contracts, and ensure that they are paid the full amount for their services. In other words, what these vendors have done, they have been able to make placement and retain the employee, uh, that employee for a certain amount of time. The client has stayed at the job for a certain amount of time, three months, I believe. So therefore, we're coming back to you saying that we are now are prepared to pay them for the full amount. We've been using this formula primarily because we do not have enough money to fund the program the way we would like to fund the program. And in order to ensure that we are not returning all the funds to the state, we hold back a certain amount. And the formula is roughly around 20% of withhold. But if and when they do exceed the amount, the success rate, then we come back to you and we pay them the full amount. Mm -hmm. um, question, uh, the Vice President Siebel. Uh, Arlene, Arlene, are you saying that these five have done so well and achieve such limits that they need more money? Yes. Is that the basis of the whole thing? Yes. Okay, good, thanks. Additional questions, freeholders? Freeholder. And this 19, Arlene, is 
is spread out between the five. Between the five, yes. I believe there is a matrix attached uh, with, the, with the decision memorandum that will indicate the amount, the program, uh, where they exceeded the amount and the amount of money for that particular program. I have the additional, I'm sorry, Madam President, I have the additional amounts if you require. Okay. Okay. I can, okay. I can pay you. Okay. All right. Okay, additional questions? Uh, Mr. McInerney, questions? Mr. Other questions? Um, record no, questions? no, thank you. No further questions? Don't go too far, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, continue, Mr. Bronowitz. Resolution 10, Department of Economic Development, Training and Employment, Division of Housing and Community Development. Extension of the Subrecipient Agreements Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, program. 2012 CDBG Subrecipient Agreement extensions will expire on March 1st, 2014. Subrecipients have requested extensions in writing, uh, requesting to extend agreements for 60 days with the attached list of municipalities to allow the project to be completed. Most of the projects are 80% completed. I have John Soares from the department here if you request uh, require more information. Okay, you want to bring him up to the mic, please? Uh, your name for the record and, and the department again, please. John Soares, Division of Housing and Community Development, Finance Coordinator. Okay, do you want to just give us a little more information on this particular um, resolution? Okay, these are projects that uh, were approved and we're not adding any more money, we're just giving them extensions. The projects are uh, between 80 and 95% done, uh, but the problem is because of the weather, they're not able to finalize it. And we're, giving, we're hoping to give them 60 more days so we can get it, uh, get it finalized for them. Additional questions, freeholders, on Resolution 10, Freehold Park? Yeah, um, yeah, we're on, we're on a, 11? 10. We're on 10. We're on 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I mean, do, are, are 10, are 10 and 11 connected? I beg your pardon. Are 10 and 11 connected? They're similar. They're similar. similar. Just similar? Yes. But then, okay. Um, okay. So we're just basically extending ones that are already, they're, they're already in queue, they're already in progress, they just need a little bit more time to complete. Correct. Okay. Okay, um, we hold the Vice President Seabold. Uh, thank you. So each one listed here needs an extension. Do they come back to you and tell you that they need an extension of time so they could complete the work? Yes, they must supply us with a letter. You know, it's got to be a written letter uh, asking for the extension. Do they give you a reason why the work hasn't been completed? Uh, the overall reasons it has been the weather because of the, the harsh winters, they okay. haven't been able to be out there. All right, that explains it, thank you. Additional questions, freeholders? Under the introduction, um, it, you list five different areas. When we say homeless needs, um, would that have anything to do with the suggestion that came to, before the board um, early on by some of the residents? Because we have housing, rehab, counseling, public facilities, homeless needs, um, and then we have public improvements, public services. These are the categories. Right. Our program has various, various components. These are all basically public facilities and public improvements. And under the homeless needs, could you just elaborate on that a little? Um, there's, there's a, a component within our, our division of um, emergency services grant, but it's not part of the CDBG, that we do provide uh, funds for uh, to shelters. Um, 
I mean, we do provide funds for shelters for um, to provide, you know, counseling services and caseworkers. But these extensions are not for you know any of those that part of the the program. Oh, okay. All right, very good. Thank you. Additional questions, comments, for notice? None. Yeah. No additional questions, comments, for orders? Okay, then um, we'll go to 11, uh, Mr. Bowden. Resolution 11, Department of Economic Development, Training and Employment, Division of Housing and Community Development, reinstatement and extension of subgrant agreement with the City of Orange Township Community Development BOP Grant Program. Um, previously approved subrecipient agreement with City of Orange Township, the library was to install energy efficient gas boilers in the amount of $35,000. The library was closed for OSHA violations. Uh, the violations identified were abated uh, on December 31st, 2013. The library was reopened on January 11, 2014. Now the City of Orange Township has requested a reinstatement of the agreement to extend the agreement also for 60 days to complete the project. And John can also answer any questions on this one as well. Okay. Freeholders? Freeholder Vice President Sibold. The library is open and running now, right? Now it is, yes. Even though this work has to be complete, is, it involves an oil tank or something like that? Uh, it had to do with the furnace, yes, yeah. and uh, so all that work. The majority of the work has been done. But they can remain open. This will not shut the library down. Correct. They can remain open and function even though they need an extension. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Um, Okay. It, since it expired last year, but the work was completed last year. So the work was completed actually after the expiration date, which is why we're now back asking for the reinstatement. The work, the majority of the work was completed before the expiration date, but what happened was the, the library was closed by OSHA. So we could not, as because of the regulations, we could not pay for the work because it was not serving the, uh, the need because the, the library was closed. If the library had been open, we would have been okay to pay. But since the library was closed, we were not allowed to pay by regulation. Now that okay. the library so, is open so, again. Yeah, because that was a big, you know, that was a big brouhaha. The, the main thing is that the, the $200,000 that went in to brick and mortar at the Orange Library, those, that, those things that were paid for out of that were actually done, even though the library itself was not ready to be opened to the public yet. And so, therefore, we're just asking for, um, a reinstatement of those funds, but that work, to your satisfaction and to the satisfaction of the funding agency, had been done and done appropriately, at, in budget and pretty much on time. Correct. Okay. Um, and now, and now, basically, the funds are just being released to pay for what was already done. Yes, if it's approved. Okay. Yes. Um, is the facility inspected? The library is inspected during the year, so that we don't run into problems with OSHA or any other well, type of. I, I mean, I really can't speak on that, but OSHA was the one that closed them down. That was the OSHA inspection that closed them yes, down. Yes, correct. Yes. I mean, but the count. Don't we examine? these situations before OSHA comes in, usually that's how some operations work. Yeah. You know, we keep a watch on things so that we don't get closed down. Well, through you, Madam President, I mean, anyone can call OSHA in at any time, uh, and, and public employees is P-OSHA, um, to do an inspection, um, even though we, you know, go through it every year, if there's a violation, you as a citizen or a resident of Orange in this case could call OSHA and say, I think there's a problem in the library, I need you to come and inspect it, I'll just come. 
So there's nothing we can do to prevent that. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a citizen's right to report it, and they come as a federal agency. Okay. Okay, additional questions for Holmes. No additional questions. Okay, thank you so much. Ms. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, we will list 9, 10, and 11. And Mr. Abramovitz will continue with the question. Resolution 12, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, a contract award to Eastern Armored Services, Inc., to provide armored car services, a one-year contract extension option, amount not to exceed $41,886.72. Um, that is a monthly fee of $3,490.56. This service is Turtleback Zoo, the Mini Golf, Cody Arena, and the three golf courses. Um, it is a 1% current index rate increase for the period March 15, 2014 to March 14, 2015. And let's take 13. Resolution 13, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, contract award to ARF Rental Services, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder to provide rental of portable sanitation units. 24-month contract amount not to exceed $380,000, uh, We received three bids out of a possible 12 vendors. The other bid was Johnny on the spot. Okay. Um, it's an open end contract as needed, and we provided you with the price range. And this is for Porter Johns for various county events. Okay, Mr. Holders, um, question comments on 12. Mr. Michael Gurney, Mr. Paul No, no questions. None, none. Um, no additional questions for you um, Let's go to 13 then. Question, um, Mr. Madam Continue. President, yes. Um, on number 13, are, are, are the, is this by the unit? So in other words, it's, it's not to exceed uh, 380,837, but it's based on use? Correct, Okay. as needed. So it could come in as needed, so it could come in less. Correct. Additional questions for you? So this is a two-year contract. This is a two-year contract. This is a 24-month contract. Yes, Madam President, two years. Okay. And, and is this the same uh, vendor that we had last year? No, it is not. Okay. Did we? Um, this vendor is the most <coughs> the worst responsible and responsible vendor. That's correct, Madam President. Okay, additional questions, comments, for you None? Okay, Madam Clerk, we'll list 12 and 13. And we'll go to Mr. Bonovis, we'll go to 14 and 15. Madam President, uh, Resolution 14, Department of Public Works, Division of Engineering, a track contract with RBA Group for traffic engineering design and construction inspection services for county traffic signals and roadways amount not to exceed 232,800. Uh, we received seven proposals from 78 potential vendors. Uh, this particular vendor had the highest score at the lowest cost, it is capital funded. Um, it's a general consulting firm as needed to provide services for various traffic signal improvements and modernization projects. There's a project pending right now, construction inspection services, traffic signal on the Park Avenue, 4th Street, Newark. Um, and we do have a representative from RBA here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, could I have him come up, please? Mr. Shepard. Good evening. Good evening. You state your name. <coughs> My name is Jeff Shepard uh, with RBA. Okay, you want to tell us a little about your company? Sure. <coughs> We're a uh, diverse group of engineers, architects, and planners. We've been doing work for uh, Essex County DPW for many years. Uh, I've been at RBA for over 16 years and been uh, doing work consistently with them over that period of time. Um, 
I personally like doing projects for Essex County. I grew up in, in South Orange, so um, I like coming back to the village and uh, improving, soon, soon making some improvements. Okay, good order. Comments? Freeholder, uh, get, get Freeholder Luciana. Uh, through you, Madam President, I'm just going to ask, um, excuse me a second, through the administrator, um, this contract, does this company actually go out when you say inspect, inspect to see if traffic signal timing is at its best? And the reason I say this is because I've been fielding some emails lately of some particular cases where they seem, where residents seem to be truly concerned about, you know, some of the timing of certain signals. So I was just wondering if this is the gentleman whose company goes out there or if this is something we do in-house. Uh, this particular contract does include some um, signal timing optimizations. Um, they were uh, listed the types of uh, which intersections are involved uh, for this particular contract. So um, there is some some of that included as well as new signal design, um, all of which have been previously uh, listed by the county uh, engineering. Okay, <clears throat> so most of this contract then is is already spelled out as Correct. to what. Okay. Correct. Yep. It's not like an open contract where exactly. they could call you in and say. Well, we need you in Roseland this week because there's an issue. Right, it's it's okay. all it's already uh, listed. So then, again, through you, Madam President, then my follow-up question to that then is: if if freeholders um, are fielding some questions from the general public concerning certain issues like that, how do we address that? Um, you know, or who do we address that to, and who takes care of that, and who handles it? Um, the Department of Engineering, I would call for that. You, you want to report uh, a complaint from a stockholder about the lights? Right. I'm sorry, about from the residents about the lights? Right. Then I would think you could either call the administration to and then back no, and then he would then in turn contact the proper the individual from engineering. Through you, Madam President, that's exactly correct. Um, I, I myself have had this question brought to me many times and experienced myself and I usually go directly to Sanji Vargas, our director of public works, and they address the issue if it's a county road. If it's a non-county road, they have contacts with the city of Newark or whatever and usually call them because I've noticed some problems with timing myself over the years and have reported it and they haven't addressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I can uh, seriously say that when you contact the administration, they will follow up and they'll get back to you with an answer. Mm -hmm. In regards to what we're discussing, I want to bring up a very difficult situation. I brought it up when we had the budget hearings, and Sanjay said he would discuss, he would take care of it with you, and apparently he did, but nothing's been done about West Market Street, and it's really very, very bad. I drive it every, every day myself. So you know. Yes, and, and First Street's not much better. No, <laughs> no, and that's all, that's all New York. Yeah. Can we get something done? Freeholder, I will try again to... Thank you. to it needs it very badly. Okay, additional questions, freeholders? Freeholder Clark. Um, did I did I hear you say, sir, that you have done work in Essex County before? Yes. Consistent. A lot of work in uh, Essex yes, County. Yes, consistent work. Yes. Okay. And. It's pretty much, from what I can see here, it's going to be on an as-needed basis. The uh, actually, we, the contract has, um, you know, the, the design for uh, uh, eight new traffic signals or, or modernization of traffic signals, four in Newark and um, four in Irvington, uh, as well as uh, construction inspection for a, a project at Park Avenue and Fourth Street. Um, uh, Northfield Avenue, um, we're going to um, modernize the synchronization of, of traffic signals. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not as needed. These are the listed um, items that we are going to address. Oh, okay. Because I'm just going by what I'm reading from the February 
and it said that uh, the work is going to be performed, you know, as they issue you a task order. But you're saying that you already know what the tasks Correct. are that you're going to be issued these work orders Correct, for. Yes. And you already know, so the county already knows exactly how much that's going to cost. Exactly. That's what we bid on. How, how many people work for your company? Um, overall, I'd say maybe 125. Do you have any African Americans working for your company? Yes. In, or women or um, yes. uh, Latinos? Oh, yes. We have any working on this project? Um, we will have a, a female mm -hmm. and a Filipino. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, but you do have people Absolutely. working for your company. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We hold it. Do we have any do you have additional questions, comments? None. Okay, thank you so much for the Thank you for your time. Um you wanna continue, Mr. Abramovich, and let's take fifteen. Resolution fifteen, Department of Administration of Finance, Office of Purchasing. Contract award to TMB ATM Group, the sole responsible and responsive bidder to provide ATM Mac machines for Essex County, March 27, 2014 to March 26, 2016. The revenue to the county will be $10,808. This is the one bid we receive from 11 potential vendor, uh, vendors. This is for uh, ATM machines at the Hall of Records, the Veterans Courthouse, the Correctional Facility, and the Hospital Center. Uh, we had a contract with PNC, um, and the revenue we received from them was $11,489.35, but they did not bid. Okay. Okay, Freehold, with question, comments? Freehold, with part? Alan, is, is anybody here from uh, the company? I'm sorry, Freehold, Is here. anyone here from the company? I don't believe so. I'm flying solo this evening. Just out of curiosity, perhaps you know, because you may have been intimately involved with this particular, um, since the county's going to, this will be a revenue generator, um, what kind of, let me just get right to, the, to, to, to my point. Are the fees that are going to be charged at this particular kiosk going to be predatory? I have no idea what the amount. Of, I can find out the amount of the fee. I understand what you're that, saying. That would because PNC, my vote will be contingent upon that. Okay. Okay. I understand. I, that's yeah, important to be, me because PNC, which had our payroll, did not charge a fee if you had a PNC account. Obviously, I don't know what they're charging right here. I will find that out for you. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Additional questions, comments. And Mr. Brown, does it get that information to the board by the next meeting? That's yes, Madam President. Okay. Additional questions, comments, freeholders? None? Okay, Madam Clerk, your list 14 and 15. Mr. McInerney, you didn't have any. Questions. I have no, 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 no. What about you? No, no questions. Okay. okay. All right, let's continue. Um, we'll um, move to resolution 16 through 35 and 37. <coughs> Uh, and 39 through 39. Madam President. Uh, yes. Johnson. I'd like to be, uh, with their permission, added on to 16 through 20 and 26 through 29. 16 through 20? Yes. And 26 through 29. And 26 through 29. I see no problem with that. We have no problem. Okay. Do we have any other? Um, Comments from the freeholders? Um, okay, um, Madam Clerk, we are list resolutions. Any questions, comments, or any additions to the resolution? None. We are um, list 16, yes. May I be added with your resolution? Number 37. Okay. For the record, number 37. You haven't got one. We didn't get okay, I didn't get that one, but I remember that and it will add you. 
Yes, I did. We, we got that. Oh, we did? I did, yeah. I included that. Okay. I said 37 through 39. Yep. Yes, I did. Yep. Sorry, Madam President. Okay. Um, so that's Harvey Johnson, Johnson and, and Vice President Siebel. Vice President Siebel. Yes. You have that? Okay. Okay, do we have any other um, stakeholders that would like to be added to any of the commendation resolutions? If none, then Madam Clerk, we will list uh, resolutions um, 16 through 35 and 37 through 39. Madam President? Yes. Just, uh, I, I took a look, uh, just going back, referring back to one of Freelder Clark's questions on number 15, resolution 15. Okay. Freelder Clark, I. I took a look inside the bid specs on that uh, the ATM um, resolution. On the specs, it said um, the the vendor may charge a reasonable fee to customers for using the machine, but such fee is not to exceed two dollars per transaction. No fee increases or exchanges shall be acceptable throughout the contract period. So that's built into the specs. You may still want to. That's the county specs, just to make sure that the uh, vendor will comply with that. $2 fee is the cap. Okay. At least per our specs. All righty. Um, we are continue freeholders. And um, Mr. Pardubeck, you want to let's take resolution 36. Um, with the clerk of the board again. Yeah. Um, Madam President, <laughs> yes. I'd, 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 I'd like to be added actually to resolution 29, I mean, uh, 28. You want, you want to be added to 28? Yes. Okay. 28. Sure, I can step into it. I didn't hear that um, freeholder clock. Uh, I asked to be added to number 28. Okay. And that was the only one? Yes. Okay. You saw the other one, All right. Um, let's move then to resolution 36. And I can, for sure, I can handle that. Resolution 36 is a resolution appointing or reappointing Deborah Davis Ford to serve as clerk of the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders. This appointment would be for a term of three years pursuant to state statute and uh, as well as our uh, code of the County of Essex. Um, I don't think I need to say much about Deborah. She has been uh, serving in the role of clerk since 2009 and this would simply be exactly what it says it is, a reappointment for that that period of time. And um, since we have our county, county court in order, now we're doing things the way it should be done. So I say to you? I said the county code when we voted on it and is up to date now, we're doing things accordingly to the code. Okay. Thank you. Thank Deborah Davis for it does such a wonderful job. Yes. And I hope She's willing to continue because I don't know what we would do now without her. That's right. Has, yes. has, has anybody ever turned down a nomination? No, I don't think they have. <laughs> so, 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 I so, so it doesn't have to be moved Deborah. and seconded. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I have. I need a mover and a second. I'll, I'll move it. it. Oh, we have a second from the office. good. That's a, I, we have I an official done. second, though. That's right. We just need an official second. Okay, so I'll I'll take. Um, Freeholder, let me take Freeholder Park. You want to move it and Freeholder mm -hmm. Vice President, Whatever would you, you second? Like. Thank you. I'd like to also second the motion. You want to second the second? <laughs> okay. Do it. After, a second I, second? I can second the second. He can second it with me. Oops. <laughs> Not you want a third second. Very good. So we, I think we have all of our motions and seconds in place. Um, we will um, vote on this resolution. On uh, uh, next week, am I correct, yes, Michael? Right. Yes, that is correct. Um, Mr. Paul Vecchio, thank you. Okay, free all the floor. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. I would like to be added to number 38, if it's okay with uh, Rio Johnson and Gill. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And you, know, me, you don't get a McDonald's All-American that often in this area. No, no. That's, true. That's a pretty big deal. And then women's, women's basketball, too? Is that that right? I mean, that's a really big deal. Uh, Usually Shabazz runs She's not. Is she going to Rutgers, Realtor? Mm -hmm. Is she headed to Rutgers? <laughs> no, she's going no, to, to Louisville. Louisville. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're losing them. We're Bianca, losing them left and right. Bianca Brown is the park yeah, sister. She's my niece. She's her niece. Yeah, the coach. The coach. coach. Say it again now. And I'm the, the coach of, of this like person yeah. for four years. For four years. It's, is, it's my niece, said, Bianca Brown. Valerie's daughter. You know Earl Brown. And I would like to be added to that also. Okay, oh. great. I skip that okay, before we move on, let me again uh, just add to, um, I am going to be the last to give my comments on the clerk, uh, this appointment, reappointment. And certainly, if anyone can say that um, I, I'm involved with the clerk on a daily basis. And I can say that the um, office is run professional and um, things are moved in a professional manner and never do I receive any complaints from the public about how the office is run and Deborah, you deserve to be here. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's move on to um, Addis Daughter's resolution. Let's list that, Madam Clerk. And let's move to Addis Daughter resolutions. Madam Clerk, are there any Addis Daughter re resolutions or ordinances? Madam President, there are none. Okay. If there is any member of the public who would like to come before the uh, freeholders again, um, even if you came earlier, want to come back again, we have, this is your time. Sir, would you please place your name on the record? Sterling Crawford. Sterling Crawford. Oh, and might I just add, um, you have three minutes to speak, okay? Good evening. My name is Sterling Crawford. Until February 15th, I was one of your constituents with no address. I'm here to speak on behalf of a group of kind-hearted, compassionate Norkers who volunteered to operate the Grassroots Emergency Overnight Warming Station. I'm here because they literally changed my life. The grassroots team was founded on January 7th, 2014. It was founded when they discovered that the city of Newark and the county of Essex had made no accommodations for those of us who were living on the streets. Even when the governor declared a state of emergency and press releases warned residents that the temperatures posed a real and imminent threat to life and limb, no one considered the homeless. The two so-called warming stations that the city opened were only open during the day when the sun provided at least a little heat, but they were nothing more than tents that did nothing to protect us from elements. By January 15th, the GO's team had found churches and organizations willing to open their doors and open the first emergency overnight warming station. They literally picked us up from Penn Station and other locations where we gathered and brought us to the station. They provided hot, nutritious meals, and more importantly, a safe, warm place to lay our heads. They opened the doors of some facility every night since that the weather has been dangerously cold. They did all this with no funding. As they got to know us, they realized that many of us wanted to do better, but simply needed a hand up. In my case, I had been accepted for a job with Labor Ready, but I did not have a state-issued ID or money to purchase the steel tool boots and the tire that was required. The GO team managed to get me an ID, boots and clothing, and I immediately went to work. As a result, I am no longer on the streets. Thanks to the GOs, I was able to rent a room until I can do better. Now I go back to volunteer at the warming stations to give back, pay it forward, and help those who are still in need. Finally, I hope that my story will encourage you to support this team of compassionate people who give freely of their time, their skills, and even their own money to help your constituents, who they like to call their neighbors with no address. The way I see it, they are doing your job. And the very least you can do is acknowledge and support them. The Grassroots Emergency Overnight Warming Station is a a political, informal group of volunteer residents who care about our neighbors with no addresses. 
This unofficial organization with, with nearly 700 volunteers and supporters was originally organically, I'm sorry, organically grown after the question was posed on January 7th, 2014. Where do the homeless go in case of a state emergency or extreme life and limb threatening weather condition overnight? As soon as we learned that there were absolutely no provisions of the city of Newark, the county of Exus, nor the state of New Jersey, we sprung into action and opened our first of many overnight. Sorry. I normally cut you off if I uh, said would say that you have 30 seconds. Okay. But you telling a life story is totally a little different, and I hope my colleagues would bear with me for us to continue to hear your story. No problem. Continue. Through your chair, Madam President, will you grant a meeting with the grassroots team and all your county stakeholders to address this matter? I'm done. Thank you. Um, what we will do, um, we will respond. Do you have a, an address at this time? At, at this present time? So we um, can respond to you in writing? Um, yes. Okay. Um, um, Gary, we're, Gary, Gary sitting we're going to have someone to take as much information from you so that we can, um, we will respond to you in writing and then um, we'll let you know exactly how the board will handle your request. Okay, no problem. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, to hear um, that sometimes everybody out there that's homeless is not homeless because it's their, at their will, it's because they ha did not have the opportunity to get that hands up that you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share. Um, do we have anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Good evening. Uh, my name is Donald Jackson, 79 Treacy, T-R-E-A-C-Y Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. Zip code 07108. Uh, right now, currently, um, candidate for North Public Schools uh, Board of Education. And I come here tonight um, off the heels of coming from our state board of education meeting down in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, where I, along with teachers, <coughs> former teachers, parents, and community stakeholders throughout the entire state of New Jersey, came out and spoke against <laughs> not only the Common Core, but the over-testing of our children and the privatization of our schools. And um, I have a few things to talk about tonight, but I'm gonna keep it very brief and keep, it, uh, you know, keep that I short. I forgot to warn you, you have three minutes. Right, de definitely understand. Um, I don't know if you all are aware. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna attest to your um, understanding or even uh, commitment here, but what I will say is, um, it's past time for talking. Um, the residents of Newark, particularly the residents here in the county, are tired of uh, empty campaign slogans and promises and no shows. Um, particularly with the uh, North Public Schools, which is now going to be the testing site for the entire state for what works and doesn't work as far as. Um, classroom procedures and uh, curriculum guidelines. Um, it is time for us to be um, aware of the problems. Um, as you all know that here in Newark that we have our one Newark enrollment um, that's trying to close Newark public schools to co-locate, relocate with charter schools and renew schools and um, this process was not even thought of with the input of students, teachers, and community stakeholders. Someone just randomly came out the blue and came up with a solution to um, save our schools. Um, our dear superintendent has now sent a letter saying that she won't come to any more board meetings or work with, with community people or students or parents because um, our monthly school board meetings are um, a little rambunctious for her. Um, I mention this to you all tonight because uh, we need all hands on deck, as Ms. Doc would say. Um, it's time for all of us to come out and get involved because the last right that we have as American citizens have to a free and public education 
is under attack here in the state of New Jersey and quite frankly, the United States of America. So um, my name is Donald Jackson again. My address is 79 Tracy Avenue, T-R-E-A-C-Y, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? Um, I don't know if you all are on the community text list from Ms. Doc, because she will definitely update you on upcoming meetings and events. But it is time for us to really get involved because we are at a state of emergency. And um, to leave that note and to go on to the crime piece, um, I came. Seconds, you're gonna have to yep, understood. I'm understood. I'm going to wrap up. Going to wrap up really quickly. Um, uh, not too long ago, I came before this board and I mentioned um, some issues that I was having, um, not understanding what I was sent when I brought a, brought to this board about the recent carjackings and the, the homicides. Um, I was sent a letter stating that the sheriff's department uh, sent letters out to automakers about. Um, creating new technologies to not steal cars. I don't know if my point was, I think what I said wasn't understood by this body. All right. When I mentioned the crime Excuse rate. Me. Yep. Your, your time is up. You have 30 seconds. I gave you a few minutes extra. Um, a few seconds extra, but yes. OK, I thank did. you. Yes. But thank you so much. And we hear you. We, we hear you, and we will respond to you. Okay, thank you. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Good evening again. Donna Jackson, 128 Smith Street, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, a couple of questions on a couple of the resolutions. Um, I am totally in awe of this $380,000 for some porta potties. I do not understand. Um, I think if we go ahead and complete the renovations inside the park, which is where most of the county affairs are held, we won't have to rent porta potties. Um, they are inoperable still at Branch Brook. Um, there are no bathrooms on the west side. Is that Doug Elizabeth Avenue? One the one on Elizabeth? Right, and it, but there's not one there at the uh, functioning. The porta potty is not a bathroom for me at the um, playground area there on Elizabeth Avenue side. It's open now? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize. It's open now, but it needs to be checked more regularly. I think if we just bring these things up to port, we can eliminate. That's $400,000, $200,000 a year to rent some porta potties is a lot of money. I would get it on that contract, and I may do that in 2015 when this one expires. Uh, secondly, um, the. I understand Ms. Steinbeck's uh, request for the additional $19,000. That's not a lot of money. Um, and, and, and us talking about service providers exceeding their uh, expectations. But I stand here today as a county res resident, and I question that. I don't see a lot of people leaving 50 South Clinton Street uh, going to work. I just don't see it. Um, I really would ask and beg that our monitoring be done a lot better than it's being done. Um, also, the equipment replacement, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Freeholder Johnson touched on it. Um, I just need to ask this question, as I do any time we're repairing something that's under 15 years old. If I buy a washer and dryer in my house, and I have to replace it in less than 15 years with a major investment like that, I got a problem. So you're going to tell me that we have a seven-year-old washing facility inside our county jail, and we are spending over a hundred thousand dollars in repairs. Something's wrong. Something wrong. You don't buy a washer and you have the repair man come out every month. You don't buy a dryer and have the repair man. Not no nothing new. If it's seven years, that's new, up to date. Drying time is a little less. I don't know what they wash in blankets or whatever. I see my thirty seconds. But this is ridiculous <laughs> to now up this to $200,000. So when we talk about fiscal transparency and responsibility, we need to stop. I, we're not buying nothing new. That is new. Anything less than 10 years old is new. Now, if we need to buy it, where's the warranty with the things that we buy? You're going to tell me we bought a washer, dryer, probably four of them, probably that mega size like they got at the, I'm, I'm wrapping up, the mega size like they have at the 199 uh, cleaners. And you're going to tell me we're fixing these things every month? Then the people that's operating them, we need to get those who know how to work it. Are they breaking because of, you know, th that kind of thing? This is a ridiculous amount of money, I'm closing, to spend on uh, repairing of laundry equipment. 
I wouldn't spend this at my house. And I have a washer and dryer and I have a warranty. And when they come out, I don't pay anything because I paid the $100 for the service for three years. Why are we not doing that? This is a waste of money. And if we do need to buy new, I'm sure we could do it for less than 200000 Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Good evening. Madam Chair, uh, freeholders. Douglas Freeman, Weekway Park Sports Authority, and uh, Southport 44th District Leader, 525 Clayton Place, North New Jersey. Um, come before you to speak about the homeless. Um, I also was in support of the group that came before you today, and I was there when they had their first day uh, with the citizens of uh, Essex County. Um, I questioned a few of the citizens, and I found out that um, some of them was homeless due to um, not being able to pay the rent. And then there was some that was veterans, and they, they didn't know that they was uh, eligible for the services uh, being veterans because they felt that they didn't have addresses. And through our organization, we have did clothing and drives and provided food inside the park. And then we recognized that the park was a a resource that we have that's in the community and the people uh, know about the park and some of the homeless that was uh, around the area actually uh, sometimes sleep in the park so we was able to uh, have conversation with them and direct them to the uh, grass food campaign and uh, organization and um, this is something that is dear to us and we believe that you know with the workforce uh, initiatives that we have and through your offices, through you, Madam Chair, can we get some type of uh, mobile uh, individuals that can survey these individuals in Penn Station and locations so they can know what type of services that we offer. If they don't have access to a computer or phone and they isolated from the community, they don't know what's available. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak at this time? Come in. Okay, take your time. Ed Wadu, Citizen 340 Thomas Boulevard. Although I'm not there, if you send me a letter, Madam Chairman, uh, I won't get it. I haven't been home in three months. I'm staying with my daughter so I can recoup. But what I want to say that uh, Mr. Chinella is out ill and we have a meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, the Weekway Park Conservancy is meeting with our regular meeting with the county. And two of our guests, it should be, I hope it's in, is Dan Savanti, and Sheriff uh, Protanto, uh, Armando, so that we'll know what's going for the coming year. You got a centennial that's coming up in Weekway Park of 100 years, and the golf course is there, and things that's going on. We need to have you there. And we appreciate it if you do, and we want to thank those who have come. But uh, Mr. Chinella is out ill, and we're hoping that uh, Mr. Cervantes and the sheriff has their invitation to be there. We thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Abramowitz, I'm sure that someone will be there to represent um, Mr. Uh, Chiel. Yes, Madam President, I'm sure there'll be someone there. Yes, very good. If not Ralph, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm of his sorry condition. But you, you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Continue. <laughs> Cassandra Doc, P.O. Box 25331 Newark. Um, I wish the, uh, some of the volunteers from the warming station had stayed here because it just came to my uh, attention um, moments after they left. But since Doug is here, Doug can transfer the information to them, and I'll also transfer it to them, too. Um, it's good that they're doing that. That's a great thing for the warming station. Um, of course, I have concerns because it's at one of our mayoral candidates' headquarters, Shavar Jeffries. The only thing I'm not understanding is Shavar Jeffries is his headquarters. He's the lead person on this ticket. Um, Anibal Ramos is also a part of this ticket, 
who uh, at one time was over all our services here and who may is probably soon to come back and be over those services again. So I'm just not understanding, like, when that, when that meeting takes place, make sure it takes place with him there because they can ask him directly about the services that they need for the people with no address. He can take care of all that. So again, um, you know, I'll tell Debbie that. I wasn't thinking about it when she was here, but I'll tell Ms. Dean that. I'll tell Jonathan that. And Doug's here, so I don't have to tell him. But um, this, is just a, this was what I need to be said uh, to them. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak or make a comment? OK, for those of you who are not familiar with the process, um, as I stated earlier, uh, all of your concerns, your questions, will be answered and um, you will receive a response from this board within the week. Okay, and again, thank you for your comments and your concerns. Okay, let's move um, with the, Madam Clerk, let's move to other business and freeholders. Do we have any additional business? Any ad uh, business freeholder clerk? <clears throat> yes, um, I actually wanted to um, bring you up to speed on something, Madam President. Um, prior to getting here tonight, I actually went to the Essex County Educators um, um, Legislative Dinner. And um, one of the things that was being discussed there was what was happening in Newark and in Montclair. And um, we had legislators there um, from the Essex County area, our, our um, State Senator Rice, um, Assemblywoman Jacy, Assemblywoman Oliver, Assemblyman Caputo, and Senator um, Gill. And all spoke about um, what was happening with the evaluations uh, that were kind of being put upon districts and also um, this, what seems to be um, uh, an, a move afoot to actually destabilize public schools um, in favor of um, charter schools. And so, um, it is indeed something that is um, happening, and it's something that is on people's radar screen. Um, I don't know um, how we might give voice to that, um, but I do know that we have a uh, current sitting public school teacher who is amongst our colleagues. And um, I know as a former public school teacher, and I, I won't be so presumptuous as to speak for my, Madam Vice President, but also a, a former public school teacher, um, the last thing we want to see is our public schools destabilized. Um, we're doing, I think, a pretty good job with our vocational schools. Uh, here in Essex County, and they are public schools. They're not private or charter. So um, we don't want to see anything happen that is going to hurt or destabilize um, public schools. Um, the <laughs> to, to have superintendents just basically write the public off, is not a good thing either. And one of the questions that occurred at tonight's meeting was about what the, legislate, this, what the state legislators were going to do to fight to restore local control back to um, various entities. Um, but one of the things that I think that we should be aware of is that New Jersey doesn't exist in a vacuum and a void. I was just in Washington um, at NACO, 
Thank you, Madam President, for, and Madam Clerk for making sure. And I want to thank Mr. Abramowitz and um, Mr. Chalala in his, ex in his absence and the county executive for ensuring that Essex County remains viable in the community of counties, which is NACA. There, the conversations about things happening in New Jersey, as you might imagine, were proliferating. And of course, education was one of them, and obviously a whole bunch of other things that I'm not going to discuss. But I am going to say that we don't exist in a vacuum or a void. And so what happens educationally here, people look at. I might, I might add that apparently New Jersey is on everybody's radar screen and is a topic of discussion for every state. Um, I will say that I had the opportunity to you know, introduce myself to the Secretary of HUD and ask him, please don't cut our CDBG funding because we need it. Um, and a few other things, um, which is what I believe you send me to do. So I did what I was supposed to do. And I'll, I'll also report back out to, to um, NJAC when I go back, uh, when I go to our meeting on Friday. But just understand that we don't exist in a vacuum or a void. And Essex County, being the second or the third largest county in the state of New Jersey, definitely is on people's radar screen. They want to know what we're doing and how we function. What's on the minds of our county commissioners? We're not county commissioners, we're freeholders. But what's on our minds? What are the, what are the things that we hold you know, most dear? What are the things that we're advocating for? So I would say we need to advocate for, by letter, to the state um, board of education that you know we really want to support our local districts, Newark and Montclair. Montclair's been doing swell for a long time. Why try to tear that up? Not understanding it. The next thing you know, they'll be coming into South Orange Maplewood saying they want to make some changes there. Why? Why? Well, as Assemblywoman J.C. said, the why is because there's a lot of money in education. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. But, you know, we really do have to be vigilant about what happens with our children. And one of the things that um, former speaker and our current um, Assemblywoman uh, Oliver said is that we need to encourage urban and suburban parents and teachers to link arms and make sure that we're speaking with one voice to protect public education and to protect our teachers. So that's all I have to say about that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And I just hope that we are willing to give voice via letter um, to some of the things that we see happening to school districts that reside in Essex County. Um, and you know what we think should should happen because we're not we're not bumps on a log so we know what's going on um, so thank you very much that's that was what I wanted to report out on for you I'm not sure if there was one other thing that I wanted to to mention I, I can't I can't remember it right now so I'm going to be quiet but um, those those two things were two things that I really wanted us to know happened. One that I asked to make sure, and I understand that we're not going to get, the uh, CDBG is not going to experience cuts. They're celebrating 40 years. And so I would, I would say to Essex County, I brought back the posters for you, Madam President, I would say that we need to do something uh, to acknowledge 40 years of CDBG um, and the kinds of work that CDBG funding actually does, the good things. That's a really good way to highlight good things that we're doing. Oh, the other one, 
and the last point is that what they call the homeless prevention thing uh, in Washington, what other states and other counties call it is they call it code purple. Um, I noticed that the folks who were here tonight, they called it code blue. Apparently the buzz or the, the, the acronym for it around the United States is, is, called, is called code purple shelters. And that too, ironically enough, was a topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and the Secretary of HUD said that if you definitely want to get funding for a program into your county, then set up a program to address homelessness for veterans. And the federal government is going to be more than willing mm -hmm. to assist you with funding in that endeavor, a code purple, if you will. So uh, I, I think that it, it was just ironic the things that were said tonight and then the things that I had just heard and discussions that I was just involved in either tonight or this past weekend. So I do believe that there's more work for us to do on that and I, and I would like to see us um, engage or set up a, a code purple kind of a thing. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Very good. Madam President. Johnson. Yes, Madam President, uh, I, I definitely agree with uh, my colleague in reference to that. And uh, one of the young ladies that's been doing this for a while is Deborah Dean Hall. And uh, I am willing, if any of the other freeholder members are men willing to set up and have a meeting with them so that we can get a, a full understanding of the length of this, because I did receive the information from the Union County's uh, Code Blue Homeless Emergency Sh Shelter Initiative. And uh, she's listed in here with them, and she's from right here in the city of Newark. So uh, I think that it would be appropriate if we even set up a meeting with her to sit down and discuss this code blue or purple. We might want to call it red or black or whatever. But uh, I am willing to join you in that for the code blue or the code purple, whichever way we're going to go with it. OK. Very good. And I would like to join my other two colleagues in the situation that we often see mm -hmm. in the city of Newark, people homeless and cold and unbearable situations. And uh, if this cold flu or whatever it may be called is going to be beneficial to these people, I support it. Very good. Um, Madam Clerk, what we will do, we will um, look to, I think what we need to do before we meet with other individuals, we should meet the group, the committee that I will appoint should meet first to see what it is you would be um, requesting from the administration before we have the meeting with the group. We, we have an idea of what they're looking for. Um, Yes. So we need to meet to see what what is our agenda because it's a large agenda. It's, it's, homelessness is not new. I think the issue that we're facing is that it's increasing. And it's not just New Jersey, it's just not Newark. Um, you can go in any part of the country and that's what you will see. You will see homelessness on the street. So um, I have uh, Owens Johnson. And Clark. Clark. Okay. Okay. Um, and we just have a meeting mm -hmm. first. Yes. Okay. Um, is additional. You have other business bills that you would like to. I just. At this I time? just have a comment, but I can hold it. Is is this the time for yes, comments? This is okay. Time. Uh, just an additional comment, because uh, it's untraditional of us to have a uh, freeholder celebration on a night that's not a freeholder meeting but this month actually tomorrow uh, freeholder Gill and I um, with the help of our clerk and our staff will be hosting Irish American Heritage celebration here at the Hall of Records and uh, I just wanted to put the invitation out there on record to the rest of my colleagues and to everyone else um, who's here in attendance in the public and our freeholder staff um, to join us in uh, such a celebration. Okay. 
Thank you. Madam President, and I'm sure the last thing. Um, rest of the freeholders will be here. Thank you. Freeholder Johnson. And uh, I want uh, everyone in the viewing audience and everyone here to know that our very own Frank McInerney will be the Irish of the year this, uh, uh, next week here. And uh, we will be here to help represent you also. Thursday, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, other comments, freeholders? Other business? Um, I would just like to, um, before I explore an adjournment, to uh, respond to the freeholder comment session. Uh, freeholder Clark uh, requested from the administration a copy of the modernization plan of the welfare office. Um, she is also requesting to schedule a work first meeting. Uh, we are waiting a response to Freeholder Clark from the administration in reference to the modernization plan. And as soon as we get that, we'll make sure you, you and the other freeholders receive it. And also the clerk is working on a, a securing a date for your uh, work first meeting for year 2014. Um, public comment session, um, Mr. Wadu asked when the senior nutrition program will be implemented in Building 92 and Weekway Park. Um, the memo was sent out on today, 3-5. The meeting is scheduled for tomorrow and they plan Mr. Wadu to make that a part of the subject uh, topic of discussion at the meeting tomorrow in reference to the um, nutrition, senior nutrition program. Okay? Is that okay? It's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, then, uh, no other business. Free <coughs> May I have a motion to adjourn? So, so.